refraction and thin lenses. There are going to be some sections where this material is not covered as part of the lecture course. That is understood and anticipated. This lab is designed to be a standalone lab with no additional support required from the lecture. In this lab, you will be doing ray tracing through a series of flat lenses, and then going into the hallway to build two telescopes. In the first part of the lab, you will be using a laser line and lenses to look at how the path of the laser bends as it travels through the optical medium. To do this, you will be marking where the laser enters the lens and where the laser exits and comparing that angle how much that is bent compared to the flat surface of the lens with the incoming angle compared to the flat surface of the lens. It is important to remember that the laser will bend as it enters the lens and bend again as it leaves the lens. That second bend we do not care about and cannot analyze. So we will only be worried about what the laser is doing inside the lens, not where it goes afterwards. Once we have a good idea of how this works, we can add a second laser line. And by having two lines that are parallel with each other, we can now talk about focal lengths of the lenses. We have a plano convex lens, a biconvex lens, and a biconcave lens. Through the ray tracing, we can figure out the focal lengths of each of these lenses, and then using the lens maker formula and the focal length, you could calculate the index of refraction of the plano convex lens and see how that compares with the index of refraction calculated from the initial measurements of refraction. When you are using your protractor to measure the incoming and outgoing angles of the laser in your lens, remember that the protractor needs a solid surface line so that you can place that line on the 0 and 180 marks and put the point where the laser is entering the lens right on that middle. If your protractor is misaligned, either too far forward or back compared to, that, compared to that surface line, or with the point of entrance not centered, you will get angles that are not correct. In the second part of the lab, you will go out into the hallway with a large convex lens, a small convex lens, and a small concave lens. By lining up two of the lenses on a meter stick, we can make a telescope where we can observe the image of the far end of the hallway. Using the two convex lenses, we can determine the exact focal lengths of both lenses. And then we can replace the eyepiece with the concave eyepiece. This allows us to build both Galilean and Keplerian telescopes. One trick when creating the telescopes is that it is very hard to read the instructions and build the telescope at the same time. Both of them are very visually complex mental tasks and it tends to be hard to do both at the same time. But 
building the telescope while listening to a lab mate read the instructions uses two different parts of your comprehension and is much easier. So if you find yourself having a hard time with the telescope, try having one of your lab mates read the procedure out loud as opposed to trying to follow along yourself. Thank you for watching this video. Here's the fact for this week. When Isaac Newton saw the light spectra, he described five colors, red, yellow, green, blue, purple. But he thought something that important, that fundamental, should have seven, because seven days of the week, seven notes in the Western scale, seven known planets at the time. So he went ahead and added orange and split purple to be indigo and violet because he wanted seven.